Welcome back for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, the program where you get to help make Calhoun County a better and safer place. Great 2017 and hoping for a great 2018 as well. I'm Chris Wright along with John Garlic, Chief Deputy from the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office. Good to see you, John. That's me. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's good to be back. Mm -hmm. Back in the saddle, as it were. 2017 has yeah. gone. Yay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, folks took some time off, but our viewers were still busy helping uh, get some information about folks that were on our they most wanted were. list. They certainly were. Let's take a look and see what we got. We had all of like five, five or six, or six arrests. Of them. Yeah, there were five or six of them. There mm -hmm. we go. Yep. And uh, count is now 4,095. That's, that right? uh, that's great. Yeah. 4,095 awesome. arrests. Thanks to you calling in information about the folks that we have in our lineup each week and uh, we'll have a brand new lineup coming up in just a few weeks. But before we get into all that, thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Today is uh, National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day and it is indeed. You know, I'm not law enforcement. I work closely with you guys on a couple of things, but I'm, I'm not a law enforcement myself. But you guys that are out there wearing the badge and protecting us and serving us every day. Uh, we do appreciate you. Well, thank you, and, and it's a good opportunity for us to say we appreciate the other agencies uh, in the county and throughout the state. Um, we've had several uh, unfortunate events during 2017, but in, in those, those bigger events, all of the agencies within the county and several from outside of the county all came together and worked together, and um, that is, is vital unfortunately in today's environment but it's good that law enforcement is a team and a family and we're seeing that very much in Calhoun County so I appreciate all the other agencies and all the chiefs and, and thank you for supporting the sheriff's office and we are here to support other law enforcement agencies as well. That is a very good thing as a citizen the last thing we want to see when something's going wrong is jurisdictional fighting and all that kind of stuff and, and I'm glad that, uh, that the agencies in Calhoun County are working very well together and the community working very well together as well. And we're gonna give you an opportunity to do that again here in just a second. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the first half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up on our lineup this week, Miguel Yacaza. Mr. Yacaza, last known to be living in Ohatchee, he's wanted for failure to pay on possession of marijuana first. Take a look at Bobby Odom, Mr. Odom, last known to be living in Jacksonville. He's wanted for failure to pay on theft of property second. And we'd like you to meet Amber McDaniel. Ms. McDaniel, last known to be living in Alexandria. She's wanted for probation violation on possession of a controlled substance and possession of marijuana second. And this is Joshua McDonald. Mr. McDonald, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for a failure to appear on theft of property first. Take a look at Michael Fleming, Mr. Fleming, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for probation violation of possession of a controlled substance, possession of marijuana, and assault second. This is Jacob Brown, Mr. Brown, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for failure to report to probation, attempting to impersonate a police officer, public intoxication, and use of possession of drug paraphernalia. And last up for the first half of our lineup, Brent Croson, Mr. Croson, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for failure to appear, domestic violence third, harassment, and theft of property first. And that's it for the first half of our lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. Those aren't all the bad guys. We've got some more for you here in just a little bit. We'll also have our Crime Stoppers segment of the show. We've got several property crimes that we need your help solving uh, that have occurred here in the last few weeks. And also, <laughs> our crazy criminal of the week this week is one that has uh, really taken the country by storm, winter storm. We'll <clears> talk <throat> about that in a few minutes. Gee, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now we want to welcome Kim Dobbs and Addie Tucker onto the show. How you doing? Ooh, doing great. Kim and Addie, hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. Are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so, so both of you are active in the the, uh, the theater here in, in uh, the Calhoun County area. Which one of you has been active longer? Um, hmm. 
I imagine that would be the old one, <laughs> which would be me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, uh, we've actually, seen you in a lot of different roles over the the years yes. here, uh, on stage, off stage, mm -hmm. and now you've got your own thing going—a professional company yes. working with adults and with kids. That's correct. Yes, uh, I uh, am from Anniston. It's my hometown. Graduated Anniston High School, Jacksonville State University, and then I went to Town and Gown Theater in Birmingham for a year. And then on to New York, and uh, I came back uh, to my hometown, uh, family issues, and mm -hmm. uh, sniffed around, found a theater, and uh, I uh, have finally gone back to my old stomping grounds of professional theater here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm delighted to be back where uh, I was first bitten by the bug mm -hmm. of uh, theater. <laughs> well, we're not going to get into who bit her or anything like that. No, we don't do that. no, no charges are being filed. <laughs> and, and I bet she's not going to tell us what year she graduates. <laughs> Nineteen. <laughs> uh, the Actually, reason it was sixty-five. I will be. I'm proud of it. Nineteen there you go. sixty-five. Own it. Way to go. Yeah. So. Addie, I understand that uh, you will be doing a, uh, you've got a few performances lined up here in the near future. One of those includes a celebration of one of our national heroes here very soon, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so who is that and what's going to be happening? Um, it's for Martin Luther King Jr. And we're going to be singing the Broadway medley from Boomers somewhere. Mm-hmm. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> probably. So, Kim probably knows all the details yeah. here. Yes. <laughs> the City Meeting Center. Mm -hmm. This is Monday the 15th at 9 a.m. The MLK Junior Breakfast. Oh. Okay. So you'll get to have a bite. Now, divas like Addie aren't supposed to get up early in the morning though, right? You're supposed to sleep <laughs> until noon and then you have your performances late in the day, right? But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Clearly, they don't have to know where they gotta be. They get up and brought there. Right? Somebody else, they just get in the limo when it pulls up. Here you are. Take your mark. Start singing. Right. You can do that. Can you do that? All right. You sure? So this is an event that's open to the public. Anybody that wants to come can come, and and it's just a celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, yes. Uh, this is. I've been participating in this for. I several years uh, and uh, used to be at the Carver Center and now it's at the City Meeting Center. I guess it grew, mm -hmm. and um, there will be a lot of performers there. A lot of uh, local talent will be featured, uh, bands and singers and uh, dancers, and it's usually um, a very exciting and. Uh, community oriented and uh, community melding uh, mm -hmm. event. So I'm delighted to be a participant. Addie, I'm sure you've, uh, you've learned some about Martin Luther King Jr. in school, haven't you? Yes. What do you know about Martin Luther King Jr.? Um, I know that he didn't like segregation. <laughs> no, certainly didn't like it. He did something about it, didn't he? He protested. Mm -hmm. And helped uh, helped people win civil rights in a uh, an era that was very different from the one that we live in. Still, some things that haven't changed, but a lot of things that have changed. It's interesting to see how one person can can spark so much change in society, isn't it? You think you can do that maybe one day? Yeah. All right. We got we got a confident youngster here, John. Yes, we do. I, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. Mm -hmm. So the event on on Monday starts at nine, uh -huh. and it goes until. Until it's done. Until it's done. So, <laughs> so people can come and go. Well, I suppose they, they can, yes, okay. but the breakfast uh, is uh, usually a big draw. Of course. So you would want to get there like by nine ish, I by would say. By nine ish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, and it's, um, it's always, there's just always a lot of great energy. And um, of course, I was ab out and about during the time of Martin Luther King's mm -hmm. big push and uh, uh, the dream mm -hmm. and so it calls up a lot of childhood memories for me sure. as well personally. All right, so Addie, this is uh, one of the things that you're going to be doing here in the near future. You've got some other performances. As a matter of fact, I believe that you will be performing alongside my son, William, <laughs> in the uh, production of The Little Mermaid. Yes. All right, so what's, uh, what's your role? I play Flotsam. All right. One of the eels. Cool. One of the eels. 
<laughs> Do that again. That was very e look like. Neat. Oh, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right. Well, try not to upstage my son, but uh, no, we've got to take do it <laughs> a lot. We've got to take a quick break, but if you don't mind, we would love to hear one of your songs after the break. Would you do that for us? Awesome. Okay. Well, we will take a quick break, and we will be back with a song from Addie Tucker here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. First up, this half, Marquise Smith, Mr. Smith last known to be living in Jacksonville. He's wanted for failure to report to probation on harassing communications. And meet Matthew Davis, Mr. Davis, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for failure to appear on criminal trespass second, possession of marijuana second, and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And this is Terry Thornburg. Miss Thornburg, last known to be living in Lincoln. She's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance and theft of property third. And we'd like you to take a look at Camelia Hogan. Miss Hogan, last known to be living in Anniston. She's wanted for probation violation on forgery second. And this is Artika Jennings. Miss Jennings, last known to be living in Anniston wanted for harassment. And last up in our lineup this week, Roy Woodrow. Mr. Woodrow, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for failure to appear on theft of property. Second, and that's it for this week's lineup. If you know the whereabouts of these folks, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers. That number 256-238-1414. All right, we've still got uh, some help that we need you to give us here in a few minutes. The Crime Stoppers segment of the show, we'll talk about uh, several property crimes. But, uh, John, ready for a performance? I'm ready. I am so excited. All right. She's we got talk her hat on, and yeah. she's, she's good to go. We've been talking with Addie Tucker, who's going to be performing in a few things, but uh, we're talking specifically about the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, breakfast that's coming up at the Anderson City Meeting Center. And this coming Monday. Kim is here with Addie, and uh, tell us what we're going to hear. Well, we are going to hear a song called Broadway Baby. And here's a fine representative of a Broadway baby. Miss Addie Tucker, she is a Kim star, and uh, which is a professional, semi-professional company that we have here in our hometown. And Addie's going to be uh, giving you a sampling of the kind of talent that Kim stars has. And are you ready, my dear? Well then, take it away. Music go. I'm just a Broadway baby Walking off my tired feet Pounding 42nd Street To be in a show Come on over here. 
So that's, that's just a little sampling. Are we going to hear that song at the, the breakfast? or? Actually, you won't hear that song. You will hear a Broadway medley, mm -hmm. which has uh, so many of the classic Broadway um, samples. Uh, because I'm all about um, keeping the classics alive, uh, because from the classics come the kind of things she's now interested mm -hmm. in. But you love the classics, too, yeah. don't you? Yeah. So we're going to have a, probably 12 to 14 kids performing um, about uh, eight minutes worth of Broadway songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's one of my stars. And this is actually a, a, the Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast is, is free for people to attend? I, as I understand it, it okay. is. You can call the Anderson Parks and Recreation Department and get more information. Mm -hmm. um, we're just the talent, <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're going to go and sing for our breakfast, I guess. All right, very good. So. Find uh, your mark and sing. That's it. Yeah. Just the talent. That's it. <laughs> just the talent. That's mm -hmm. it. So <laughs> what, uh, what's your favorite role that you've performed so far? My favorite role is Gladys Herdman, the best Christmas pageant ever. Best Christmas pageant oh. ever. Can you give me some <laughs> advice? Okay, I'm taking my wife to New York this summer, okay? And we're going to see a show while we're there. But we haven't decided which show we should see. If you were going to New York, if, you, if you, your husband was taking, are you married? No. Okay. <laughs> if you had a husband and he was taking you to New York, what show would you want him to take you to? Wicked. Wicked? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wicked was good. We, we saw that mm -hmm. one in Atlanta, and it was really good. School so of Rock would be my School right. of Rock? Yeah. Okay. Kim, what do you think? Um, I, I would go to tickets where they, uh, you get half-price tickets, and I would <laughs> see what was available. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not Hamilton, right? No, Hamilton. Uh, <laughs> I would say Ooh. you better get started on that right now <laughs> if you're going to try to get that ticket. Yeah, that's, that's a, a hot ticket on, on Broadway Indeed. right now. The, the theater is alive and well. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Well, Addie, we appreciate you being here and uh, look forward to uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. breakfast. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. All right. And we'll be right back. John and I will be with the crazy criminal of the week. You don't want to miss this one on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers portion of our show where we ask you to help our investigators with these cases. First up this week between December 17th and December 18th, an RV was burglarized on Cotacula Road in Anniston. Miscellaneous appliances, power tools, currency, a Canon camera, and a charter arms revolver were taken from that RV. And sometime on December 18th, the male entered a local business on Highway 431 and stole a wallet with contents. There's his picture. If you know who this guy is, give us a call. And approximately 1.30 a.m. on December 19th, the business on Chocolatka Road was burglarized. They got away with a bunch of tobacco. And on December 21st, this home was burglarized on Robertson Road in Piedmont. Multiple fishing rods and reels were taken, and an unknown light-skinned male in a white truck was seen moving the item. So if you know that guy, give us a call. And sometime on December 25th, two unknown persons entered a fenced yard of a business on Highway 144. The suspects sold 400 pounds of copper wire scrap and a scrap heat exchanger. Between December 24th and December 26th, an unknown person or person broke into a storage unit on Spring Branch Road in Alexandria. A Predator 4000 3200 watt generator was stolen from that location. And sometime on December 26th, the delivery of medication was stolen from a mailbox on Philadelphia Church Road in Piedmont. Also on December 27th, a 5x10 red tilt utility trailer was stolen from a residence. Helen Drive in Piedmont. Sometime between November 24th and December 29th, a 16-foot utility trailer was stolen from a residence on Harold Boozer Road. And on December 29th, numerous cars were broken into at different residences on Idlewood Circle and on Fairwood Drive in Alexandria. A rifle, ammunition, currency, a Dell laptop, and iPad were stolen from those vehicles. And also on December 29th, the home on McGinnis Drive in Jacksonville was burglarized. 
numerous firearms and jewelry were stolen from that location. On January 2nd of this new year, a vehicle was broken into on Fairling Lane in Anniston. Sunglasses and paperwork were taken from that vehicle. And last up on our lineup this week, on January 3rd, a home on Forest Bend Road in Piedmont was burglarized. Numerous guns, ammunition, and knives were stolen from that location. A suspicious white car was seen leaving the home. And there's your caseload for this week, a lot of cases. We hope you have some information on these cases. Hope you recognize some people in those photographs. And if you do, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers. That number, 256-238-1414. And remember, we want your information and not your name. All right, our crazy criminal this week is not stupid, but <laughs> this is definitely <laughs> crazy. You know, as cold as it was, and even worse in other places of the country, stormy weather, the only person you could blame would be Elsa, the ice queen from <laughs> Disney's Frozen, right? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> we caught her! There the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office caught Elsa. <laughs> there she is being arrested, <laughs> and Jasmine shows up to try to bail her out. And uh, thanks to donations from... Our uh, fans on Facebook, yep. over $1,000 raised for the fairy tale project, which these young ladies are part of. And here we had a couple of youngsters that came in and made donations themselves. They did. Of their own money to help bail Elsa out. So she is out on bond and uh, over $1,000 raised so that these fairy tale princesses can continue meeting with kids and sick children and some adults as well and just spreading joy and cheer that is what if you haven't checked out the fairy tale project you need to it's yeah. great isn't it it's a great it's really a wonderful organization and it's great that, that we had them arrested <laughs> <laughs> we had so much response on that over 300,000 people looked at that picture and that story and more than a thousand dollars donated and television stations from Baltimore to Houston to Arizona to Florida and all over have reported on Elsa being caught by the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office. And I have a message from Mickey Mouse on my voicemail <laughs> saying he needs to talk about something. Okay. All right. I'm not sure. Okay, we let her go. We're done. All right. Uh, we are done for the show. We'll be looking for you again next week, but hopefully not in the lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.